author has a new true crime offering trending right now on Amazon. This is Chris Jossert, and he profiles the nation's longest fight for justice. It is an amazing story, and it's from halfway across the country. Good morning, yeah. Chris. Good morning, Malayan and Nate. Thanks for having me on. So you are local. But this story is not, but certainly piqued everyone's interest. How did you get involved in this story? Yeah, so in 20, uh, 2015, Fox Valley Tech, for, with both of you know, mm -hmm. with whom I work for, yeah. uh, my other job, we held a Crime Writers Academy and hosted crime writers from around the country. Long story short, there was a keynote address um, given by a really well known fiction crime writer at that function and I hooked up with her publicist mm. in New York and one thing led to another in terms of, hey, uh, Chris, what can we ever do for you? Thanks for helping our. Um, writer get some publicity and so I said you know I really love to write can you hook me up with some connections in New York City ironically the great granddaughter of a gentleman who had been wrongfully convicted of murder worked for that same publicist mm. and we were connected that way so uh, just some real back some quick background for your for your viewers this is currently the longest running fight in the nation corroborated by research for a wrongful murder conviction 51 years. Wow. So when we first met, the gentleman's name is, is Sam Summer. When we first met Mr. Summer, my wife and I decided, let's get to know him first as a person, mm. and then everything else will unfold and maybe make sense later. And we're glad we did that because this is a gentleman who was one of the biggest innovators of food service in the late 60s, was a very caring businessman. He introduced uh, food to different markets in New Jersey and New York, had the first deli in Long Island. Long story short, again, based on time here, he was kidnapped at a Dunkin' Donuts restaurant in Colmack, Long Island, which is part of Suffolk County, um, for a murder of his relative who was overseeing his business while he was on a trip to Florida. Well, the gentleman overseeing his business was a relative who had gone through some tough times, had lost his wife, and had some, some run-ins with the mafia back then. His son had a, a gambling pro problem. He loaned $5,000 of Mr. Summer's business money while Mr. Summer was in Florida on vacation to a convict, a convict I'm sorry, con uh, felon, okay. um, who was doing some work on the side for the business. The guy paid him back with a balance check. The um, relative went to the police and we, the relative was found murdered two days later. My guy, the subject I wrote for, was in Florida at the time, comes back a few days later, he is kidnapped by police, they pinned it on him. Here's the eerie part of the story. In 2015, through the Freedom of Information Act, Mr. Summer was granted permission to scour the archives, the police archives on Long Island. He found a document that had been filed for 44 years in a carton in a basement that was dated and signed by a detective. I have the document at home. Every time I look at it, it just brings tears to my eyes. The document says grand jury indictment for arrest dismissed. <gasps> he should have never been arrested for the crime to begin with, much less spent 21 years in prison. Good news, that document has reopened the case. He is now going through a couple of different options to get acquittal. Uh, but the pain and suffering of his family is unimaginable, you two. I yeah. just, and, and living this story for four years, there's been a lot of tears. And yeah, and as you can tell, Chris is obviously totally involved with this yeah. case. You've gone to New York, you've talked to him, you've done countless interviews, and you've, like you said, been working on it for four years. I guess the question is, since you mentioned Malene, he's been halfway across the country, why are you so involved in this? Because obviously, you know, we know that it appears to be a wrongful conviction, but to be involved with a case in New York, you know, why are you so involved? Well, as a writer, it was just something that was next to my lap as a project mm -hmm. to take it on. And it's been absolutely fascinating. I've had to wear the hat of a, a lawyer. I had to wear the hat of a, a judge for a day. I've had to wear many, many hats. There's actually a law book published in 1971 about his case, about how not to run a courtroom. Mm -hmm. It was that bad. And so it's been uh, a, quite a ride. I will tell you, it's not a case about bad lawyers or bad judges. It's a case about hate and it's a case about evil. Mm -hmm. This is a hate crime that was done before hate crimes were ever even mm -hmm. coined by the media in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And then it set off a series of decades worth of corruption, sadly, on Long Island. Good news is there's a new DA out there. Things are looking up. He's really committed to uh, cleaning up a lot of the bad deeds that have happened on Long Island, but certainly it was an ill-fated situation from the get-go. And we mentioned that the book is trending. Uh, how does that feel? Where, where are you at on Amazon? And is it kind of fun to watch that chart? Well, it was released in late March. In the first week that it was released, it came in as a top 10 book on true crime 
on Amazon. Since then, we've just kind of gotten away from that a little bit, and we're just working toward using the book as a tool, Malene, yeah. to help him be acquitted for this crime and to lift that burden off his family. That's been the most important thing. But, yeah, it was exciting to see that there was interest in this when it first came out. All right, and uh, again, Chris, where can people find it? Railroaded, it's available now, right? Yeah, Wild Blue Press, all one word. WildBluePress.com is the publisher. There are many different formats that you can find there through, um, through that vehicle. All right, well, we look forward to reading and hearing more about this. I'm sure his family is forever indebted to you, and also just a fascinating story. Thank you for sharing part of it with us today. Thank you for the opportunity.